Hi, I'm Becky Stern, and today we're talking about connectors for your DIY electronics projects. Connectors make it easy to engage or disengage a set of connections in your circuit, like the USB cable you've been using to program your Arduino board. The plug and the port are standardized sizes designed to fit together. The wide rectangular one is USB-A. The big square one is USB-B. The step pyramid one is Mini-B, which you don't see so much anymore because of its smaller sibling, the trapezoidal Micro-B. You're probably already familiar with USB-C. The USB standards are collaboratively maintained by a consortium called the USB Implementers Forum. You might recognize these. They're alligator clip leads, or crocodile clips, depending on where you're from. They make it simple to temporarily connect wires and component leads, so long as they aren't super close together. On to the next most common power connector, barrel jacks and plugs. You'll often find a 5.5 millimeter center positive barrel connector on hobbyist boards, battery packs, and AC adapters, which usually have a polarity diagram on the label. Next up, I wanna talk about headers. You probably already use breadboard wires with mail headers to plug into your solderless breadboard and microcontroller boards. But you can use wires with female headers to extend your wires and to plug in male header pins, which come in all sorts of configurations. Wire to board connectors are just custom shaped pieces of plastic holding a particular configuration of headers and sockets. The distance between the pins is called the pitch, and there are many standard configurations, such as those designed by JST, or Japan Solderless Terminal Manufacturing Company. They are differentiated by their type, for example, JSTPH, then also the number of pins and the pitch. Here's one of my favorite connector styles, the screw terminal. These consist of an insulated metal space that is clamped when the screw is tightened. These can be more sturdy than some other connectors and are less likely to come unplugged from physical movement. Here's a tip for using stranded wire with screw terminals. Sometimes they can be a messy combo and that mess can cause a short circuit. But you can twist and tin the ends with solder to tidy it up and make it fit more cleanly inside the terminal block. This next connector works similarly, but there's a lever inside instead of a screw. These splice lever connectors are commonly used in places that are hard to reach with a soldering iron or where a mechanical connection is preferred over a soldered one, like in light fixtures or vehicles. Alternatives used in similar contexts are wire nuts, which you might recognize from AC house wiring, and crimp connectors, which you see in automotive wiring because they are less prone to vibration damage than soldered connections. Another popular connector series you might see in hobby electronics is TS, TRS, or TRRS. These are used for audio, so you might recognize them from your headphones or if you're making guitar pedals. The name stands for tip sleeve, tip ring sleeve, or tip ring ring sleeve, describing the two, three, or four connection points, respectively. The sizes available are a quarter inch or 6.5 millimeters, an eighth inch or 3.5 millimeters, and the teeny one is 2.5 millimeters. Look, connectors are just a way to pinch conductors together so electrical charge can flow. Nowhere is this more obvious than in the next connector on our list called a flat flex connector, or FFS. That's what this end of the flex PCB is called, along with its corresponding clamping socket. These tiny connectors have some pretty tight specs, so be sure to read the data sheet carefully to make sure you're matching things like the necessary stiffener thickness. So we've covered most of the common low voltage connector types, and now it's time I remind you that you can get or make an adapter for almost any combination of connectors. So you can plug in an AC adapter with a barrel jack to your breadboard circuit using a terminal block to barrel jack adapter, for example. 
We've just scratched the surface on a bunch of different components here today, and I hope you're inspired to try using some new connectors in your projects. I've put links to some resources in the description. Leave your favorite connectors and advice in the comments so we can all learn together. Check out the playlist with the rest of the series and subscribe to be sure you don't miss the next one.